Hey, Shad here with Speed Addicts, a fast growing gear site on the web. And today we're going to uncrate this Shoe Birth S3. What's up, Speed Addicts fan? Before we jump in and give you that full breakdown you've been waiting for on this new Shoe Birth helmet, do us both a favor subscribe to this Speed Addicts channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the latest parts or gear coming your way. Speed Addicts, always getting first look, just like here with the Shoe Birth S3. Subscribe, that way you don't miss out. Also, if you'd like to support us here at Speed Addicts, you can do so by shopping at speedaddicts.com. We make it real easy. There's a link in the description below. They'll get you right over to that Schubert S3. You can also shop for any other parts or gear that you may need for your next two-wheel adventure while you're over here. One note, Schubert S3 will not be available until late summer or fall of 2023, so we are a little early with this video. That said, anything that is out of stock at Speed Addicts, you can always put in your email address and get that in-stock notification. The minute it hits our warehouse, you'll get an email and you can be one of the first ones in the United States to own the latest and greatest out of Germany. Okay, Schubert helmets. We love the German engineering. The feature is very well thought out. And one of the main things folks love about Schubert is the noise or lack thereof. Schubert are known as one of the quietest helmets on the market. When someone calls up and talks to our rider support team and is concerned about noise, they're putting down lots of miles. They just don't like noisy helmets. They want the quietest helmet. We point them towards Schubert. The S3 is going to fit that mold. Now this is a full face helmet. It is not a modular like the rest of the Schubert lineup that is real hot right now, like that C5 or that E2. If you don't care about a modular helmet, don't buy one. If you don't want that flip up chin bar, a full face helmet will always provide more protection. There's just no way around that. It doesn't have a joint. They also tend to be even a little bit quieter. They don't leak air. There's less parts to break. You get the drift. If you don't need the modular, go with the full face. And now Schubert has a new addition in their lineup that will get you just that. The price tag's also a little bit friendlier. You're only gonna be at $599 to $699. I know, only six to $700, but when you compare it to the C5 or the E2, it is a discount. Still premium to ultra premium price tag. With that comes a composite shell with carbon fiber reinforcements. This thing weighs in at three pounds, nine ounces, or about 1600 grams making it not the lightest helmet out there. It's kind of middle of the road for a touring helmet with that drop down sun visor. Of course, Schubert would tell you they're not trying to make the lightest helmet. They can, they're trying to make an exceptionally safe and quiet helmet. DOT is going, they're going to of course be DOT homologated here in the States. The jury's still out on whether or not they're going to go with that new EC2206 label or dual homologate this thing at all. The C5 and the E2, we were kind of surprised when they showed up and they were only DOT. Schubert tells us that the helmets, of course, would pass that EC2206 standard and that perhaps the factory decided not to label them as such to save some money. You know, costs for a manufacturer get multiplied by about four. So if the cost to label them as ECE2206 and that testing to go with it for the US helmets is going to cost them $25, it's going to put another $100 on the price tag. So it could be you know, an economic decision, but we'll just never know if they don't label it. So if they're listening and the decision hasn't been made yet, we'd love to see that EC2206 label. Now with the head shape, highly customizable internal liner that is a multi-piece comfort liner, unlike any other in the industry, allowing you to adjust that head shape if you're not intermediate oval, just a bit in either direction. I'll show you more on that in a minute. Two shell sizes and size range, extra small through three extra large. So really no one should be left out here unless you have an exceptionally large head and then you'll have to look elsewhere. When it comes to fit, go by that Schuber sizing chart. They are known to run true. You should be in great shape, but if you miss, you really should be shopping at spx.com because we got you covered with no cost returns. That's right, we don't nickel and dime you like corporate moto outfits. We're gonna treat you like family, give you that free return label where you can exchange or get a refund. A couple of clicks, all you have to do to qualify is live in the lower 48 states. Make sure the helmet's brand new in the original package and you'll get that no drama return process. Okay, before we do the full breakdown, one thing Schubert wanted us to pass along is that you should not be importing helmets to the United States that were not made for the US market for two primary reasons. Number one, it's not DOT and technically you could run into trouble if you're in an accident, your insurance company wants to make a fuss about that. Number two, it's not gonna be warrantable in the United States. So if you do have any problems, you've invested a lot of money, the US warranty house will refuse to take care of you. So we recommend going with a trusted dealer in the United States for your shoe birth needs, be it Speed Addicts or someone else, just keep that in mind. Okay, first off, that 80 dB 
guarantee is what we're hoping to see here on this S3. We're waiting on the final literature from Schubert, that, but that's what we'd expect. 60 miles an hour on a naked bike, 85 dBs into the holes on your head here. Keep it quiet, keep you focused and collected. We have ventilation that is nice and big. Look at those nostrils. This thing is flaring, flaring his nostrils at you. Inside of here, when we look from, when we turn the helmet over, you'll notice that they do have a filter. These holes are so big, you could get like a bug or some sort of debris on the road. So it does have a, um, a filter that can be replaced right behind this primary chin bar vent. Then you get this cantilever vent that's going to direct air onto your face shield to help it keep from fogging. Of course, you also have the pin lock insert which Schubert installs from the factory. It's really cool. You don't have to mess with it. It's gonna come right on this clear shield from the factory. The pin lock insert is going to reduce or mitigate fog, making this an excellent choice for more, most sport touring or touring riders. Up on the top, more aggressive ventilation. When you look at the EPS liner underneath the shell, you're gonna see two big ram air ducts. They are large diameter and they're gonna force a lot of air into this helmet right in the crown section. Now, the cool thing about Schubert and that crown vent is that it is not only closable with a switch, which it's a switch, you know, it's right in the middle, it's easy to find, and it's relatively a big target. Same down here. I like their switches on this helmet. They're not anemic. But the other cool thing is that from the inside, with this switched off, you can also close their cold weather flap to really seal off any air leakage. So if you are touring in colder temps, the shoe berth is our pick because of that. On the back, we don't have any winglet vents or any sort of ventilation down low, just kind of your standard escape behind this. This cannot be closed off, but if you have that front end totally locked down like I was talking about, you're gonna be in great shape. Let's check out the face shield. You got your vortex generators here that's gonna clean up the air and help keep the helmet from buffeting. Also down low, you see these little fins? This is to prevent the helmet from lifting. So it's gonna direct the air, hold the helmet down in place and make sure it's nice and planted. I know a lot of you are running pretty big windscreens, so maybe that's not a problem for you, but if you're on more of a sport touring machine, you got more wind coming at you, this is a very cool thing that's gonna help the helmet from, uh, from lifting. Okay, face shield. We have tabs, ambidextrous, either way you wanna to go to, go ahead and open this up. You notice there's no nose guard. Kind of interesting call they made there. They must have a reason behind that. I haven't figured it out yet. Their shield mechanism, pretty similar to that C5 or the E2. They have this tumbler system. And uh, if you want to switch these out, it is pretty straightforward. You're just going to lift that. They pop in and out. And uh, that is that. Pin lock insert installed from the factory, like I was talking about before. And it is detented. You have about five or six different stages here. You can leave it clipped just a little bit open at that demist setting if you want to get a little bit more airflow. Sun visor. I love the Schubert sun visors because they do expose the clips. If you do have to replace this for some reason, you can actually access the clips and remove this without guessing and fishing. A lot of sun visors are a pain to deal with should you have to take them off. If you don't want to run the sun visor, you don't have to. You could remove it too. Less weight, less moving parts. So if you're not going to use that, you got prescription sunglasses or something like that. Good to go, go ahead and take it out. If you do run it, the actuator's here, silky smooth actuation, and yes, this is a glasses-friendly helmet like all the shoe bursts. So we'll go ahead and drop this back down, and that is your face shield system. Let's flip over and check out the interior. Really nice place to be, and simple to get in and out of because they do have the quick-release strap. So you can just go ahead and pull this to get in and out. This can be a polarizing feature. Some people are diehards, they want that double D-ring, but uh, if you've ever used one of these, it's really nice, especially if you're taking shorter trips around town, get in and out of the helmet, it is quick. You got a chin curtain here that is two stages. You can see how this is kind of like, um, like two pieces. This is Velcroed in, so if you don't want to run the full chin curtain, you can remove this, and uh, you have a little bit easier time getting in and out of the helmet. Now that will make the helmet louder. While we're talking about sound, remember, to get the quietest helmet, you should have a very snug fit without causing pain or discomfort. We recommend trying on helmets for about 20 minutes in your living room. Make sure there's no hot spots. Make sure it's squeezing you nice and tight. It's gonna break in about 10 or 15%. Remember that. And remember that a snugger helmet is a quieter helmet. Helmets break in. You don't want them to get loose and start to move around on the road. It's going to make them loud. Emergency cheek pad releases for EMS in case of an accident. And before we go further into the interior, Let's talk about the integrated comm situation. We have a door here to use the shoe berth 
SC2 system. Now this is made by Senna. It is a 50 series equivalent, so it's got all the goodies. It's got mesh, it's got voice commands. You can tell it to do whatever you need to do and be hands-free about it. So it's a great unit. The problem here is that it's gonna be difficult to run the unit of your choosing, not only because this door and slider are in the way, but they actually pre-installed the microphone, the antenna, and the speakers from the factory with every S3. So you're gonna have to fish those out and then find a way, if you're gonna use a universal kit, you're gonna have to take that stuff out and then you're gonna have to find a point to mount that universal kit. I would recommend if you're gonna invest in a Schubert helmet, just run the Schubert SC2. It is a great unit. Now, if you're using mesh and you wanna to talk to that larger writing group, Remember, this is a Senna system, that SC2, so they, your friends will have to be on Senna for mesh. If you're only gonna to talk to one other person and it's just Bluetooth communication, you can cross brands. That's a rule across all systems, not just the SC2. So brands, one-to-one, -one, universal pairing mode through Bluetooth, always doable. Those bigger RESH writing, writing groups are brand dependent, so if you're on Senna's or a white label product like the SC2 made by Senna, Friends need to be on Senna and so on with, same with Cardo. Okay, so those, those are your doors and then this is another panel in the back that they use. The cool thing is, is that the speakers and that microphone are, and the antenna are all ready to go. So the install with the SC2 is very, very quick. Let's take these cheek pads out of the way. So, you know, Schubert is always doing this neck roll system, you know, that's part of the cheek pads. It's crossed over on this chin strap to try to get the best seal they can around the bottom of your head. Now this neck roll is not quite as intense as the C5 or that E2 helmet, where it's got basically a whole nother gasket around your head. So, you know, we'll have to see how this performs if it's quite up to the same standards of noise canceling, you know, with that neck roll. Um, that remains to be seen on the production helmets that are gonna come in later. I expect if Schubert is, you know, putting their stamp of approval, that 80 dB claim, then it will deliver the goods. Just a little bit different design here. Let's check out these sheet pads. They're using that same kind of micro suede material. It's got that Alcantara feel as the C5 and the E2. Very nice place to be, contoured laser cut cheek pad. Really nice, available in different size. This one is that 15 millimeters, but if that doesn't fit, talk to the Speed Attic Rider Support. I'll get you dialed in, make the helmet yours. Okay, we're gonna clip out the rest of these. Here we go. Mm -hmm. All right, there's the rest of that cheek pad system. And one thing that is unique to only Schubert helmets, their chin strap, it looks quite different. You notice that there are two points of connection, not just that standard one in the front, but it's got this anti-roll-off strap that moves to the rear of the helmet. It's to keep it on your head when things get really dicey. I think this is a really smart system. And uh, I'm, I don't know if they have it patented or not, but it seems like the best way to ensure the helmet stays on your head in case of an accident, of course, it is adjustable. Okay, now we're gonna show you you see the speakers from the factory are already installed, so really no drama when it comes to that comm system, especially if you're not super tech savvy. Now, when we remove this comfort liner, you're gonna notice lots of pieces, okay? So this is the back of the head. Let's go ahead and remove the side pieces. Now these side pieces, they have like a round head shape version, and then they've got a, a narrow head shape version, so this goes up on the side. Here's your other side flap. Oh wait, there's more. Here we go. There's the forehead flap. Now, there's not big snaps here. This is nice. This mesh piece, got the brow attachment, comes in and out easy, all removable, washable. And see this is a 10 millimeter. So if you're shorter front to back, you can bulk that up. If you got a longer oval, you can interchange all these pieces. And here is the Mohawk, the center piece. Like I said before, it's got that cold weather flap on here. This is pretty cool. This flips over and it's going to block that crown air intake. You see those big holes up there, kind of right in the crown area? That flap is meant to cover those off. That is that dual density EPS crash liner. That about does it, folks. I am out of material about this S3. I hope you enjoyed the review. Five-year warranty from the folks at Schubert. They are great about their warranty claims. They have offices here in California to take care of their customers. If there's something I didn't cover, you want more information, Rider Support is always standing by at speedax.com where you can talk to a human over the phone, emails, or live chat. Also, when you get one of these, let us know how you like them in the comment section below, or if you got any questions, hit us there. That does it for today. We'll see you next time to find out what's in the crate.